ذوقنا شفاعة الحسين اللهم ارزقنا 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 شفاعة الحسين O oh, the one who holds my soul in his hand answer me this prayer let me return to serve my beloved Hussein year after year since birth I was raised in his name and told this by my mother Told that the service of Hussein is service like no other O oh, my Lord who raised me in the love of Hussein Allahumma arzuqna shafa'at al-Hussein Allahumma arzuqna shafa'at al-Hussein O oh, my Lord I beg you by all all the tears that flow down my cheeks Oh my Lord, I beg you by All the tears that flow down my cheeks Seal my mouth, don't let me speak Unless for Hussein I speak Seal my mouth, don't let me speak Unless for Hussein I speak let me serve his banner, his name, and the dust under his feet. And only when I'm serving Hussein, bring me my death to meet. Oh, my Lord, take my life when I'm serving Hussein. Allahumma arzuqna shafa'at al Hussein. Allahumma arzuqna. Shafa'at al Hussein. Hearts do not know what love is until they fall in love with him. Hearts yearn for him like a father is yearn for by an orphan. Crying for him washes away all the past, the lies and sin. And Hussein's love asks me what can I be, not what I have been. Oh my Lord, make me with the lovers of Hussein. Allahumma arzuqna shafa'at al Hussein. Allahumma arzuqna shafa'at al Hussein. O oh Lord, remove from my heart all my sins and my arrogance. Let the world know Hussein's a king, and I am but his servant. O oh Lord, remove from my heart all my sins and my arrogance. Let the world know Hussein's a king, and I am but his servant. Take my master to heaven, only then give me admittance. And take my master to heaven, and only then give me admittance. And for my own worries are nothing, when for him I lose patience. And for my own worries are nothing, when for him I lose patience. So oh, my Lord, make me humble when I serve Hussein. Allahumma arzuqna shafa'at al Hussein. Allahumma arzuqna. Shafa'at al Hussein. If you ever find my eyes dry, then for Hussein make them wet. If you ever find my eyes dry, then for Hussein make them wet. And let my hands witness to you that for him I strike my chest. If you ever find my eyes dry, then for Hussein make them wet.
and let my hands witness to you that for him I strike my chest. Let me mourn him day and night, both in this life and the next. Let me mourn him day and night, both in this life and the next. When I wail for him, it's as if with Hussein I have met. When I wail for him, it's as if with Hussein I have met. Oh my Lord, let my tears flow only for Hussein. Allahumma arzuqna shafa'at al Hussein. Allahumma arzuqna shafa'at al Hussein. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم من مصابنا أبي عبد الله الحسين عليه السلام Dearest viewers, we welcome you We welcome you to another year Another year where we commemorate the shahada The greatest shahada that this planet, this universe, creation has ever witnessed The shahada of Abi عبد الله الحسين عليه السلام The grandson of the Holy Prophet of Allah, Nabi Al-A'zam, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alih. And it's apt that Mullah Ali begins with this recitation, Oh Allah, grant us this shafa'a of Hussein Alayhi salam. And it's this time where each of our hearts and each of our minds, they kind of enter a new trance. No matter what we've been facing in the last year, in the last months, in the last weeks, in the last days, something about these 10 days it's like a catalyst. It takes us out of everything else and accelerates us towards something new. But something so familiar, but we pray it's something new and I'll discuss why something new. But inshallah, over these 10 nights, as I like to try and call this session, it's the post-majlis majlis. It's once you've finished your majlis at home, for those of you uh, more so in Europe, that you've come home and you're switching off for the night and you just want to reflect a little bit. A little bit of emotion, a little bit of reflection, a little bit of emotion, a little bit of reflection. That's inshallah what our plan is to bring to you over these 10 nights with myself, with Mullah Ali and with a multitude of guests and reciters that you'll know who will be joining us across the 10 nights inshallah. Um, and if you have anything that you would like to share with us, just drop us a message um, and to the team and we'll try and inculcate that into one of the nights for you. But we'll keep it quite broad, but specifically journeying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the vehicle that is Aba Abdul Al Hussein. Mullah Ali, how's everything? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, we're doing well. Doing well. I was doing just well. thinking, as you were reciting that, it was kind of like, it always feels a bit nostalgic, right? Night one, I feel always is a little bit nostalgic. Yeah. And I was thinking, a year. It's been a year since we were sat here mm -hmm. when, no, I don't think there's any majalis. I think no. this was our only majalis. We're kind of like, this is what we had. And yep. even at that, it was a blessing that this is what we had. Alhamdulillah, yeah. But a year. Can you believe it's a year? Yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot happened uh, during this year, especially where we are at in the UK. You know, sometimes we're in lockdown and another time you're out of lockdown and health is the major, major yeah. priority for everyone. You know, we've, um, people have lost loved ones actually during, during this year. I personally have uh, lost my, my, uh, my grandmother to, oh my um, God, to COVID just a couple of weeks after Muharram, actually during the Arba'in mm. season. Um, and so it's, it's quite hard to, to, to believe that from a personal perspective that some of the loved ones that we usually see and greet during Muharram, um, they're not around. I'll give you another personal story. I remember my grandfather, mm -hmm. um, may, may Allah bless his soul, um, mm -hmm. many years ago he passed away. He, I, I remember on the 10th of uh, Muharram, 10th of Muharram, I was, I was very young at the time, he was, he was with us. Um, on the 10th of Muharram, day of Ashura, I was in the morning, we're going towards um, going towards the majlis, and this man just would not stop crying. Um, he just would not, he was in the car with us, and, and I was probably, what, seven, eight at the time. Mm. I just kept looking at him thinking, what is it that you are feeling, and what is this emotion? I know that Imam al-Hussein is important to you. He's, he wasn't that important to me then, because I didn't understand the concept sure. of Muharram sure. and Sha'ar and, and, and getting involved in majalis and service and khidmah, but I can see there was a, a deep grief in this man's face. Um, and so, yeah, years on, uh, I then can start to remember that's why he was so emotional. It, mm -hmm. it, it can overtake an individual, right? It can overtake, yeah. and, and I remember 
again, as we said, this was, you know, the only measures, maybe there was a couple of house things that we were doing with family members. And I remember on, on night one as well, before we then came here, uh, we're at my uncle's place. And it was weird because just a few months before we were in Iraq, everything was normal, right? Mm. At that point, everything was normal. And I was there and I was like, whoa, we've taken it for granted, man. Yeah. Just that feeling of it, it's finished. Like, yeah. we don't know when we're going. At that point, you know, alhamdulillah, a lot of the brothers and sisters have gone and may Allah keep all of the zawar safe and the locals yeah. safe. But yeah. it felt like it was shut off again, yeah. quite suddenly. And I, I'm just thinking about this and I'm like, you know what, Muharram, and I, I mentioned in, in, whenever I start in Muharram, I always say the same point, but I think it's so apt year after year, which is, if I ask you, March 23rd, 2020, what were you doing? You'll be like, no idea, right? Office. Generic, right? <laughs> yeah. March 23rd, 2021. It's close to you, but like, oh, still, I haven't got a clue. Yeah. If I ask you, fine, June 15th, you're like, no idea. July, no idea. Last week, no idea. What were we doing, Muharram 2020? And you can draw out this picture in your yeah, head. And okay. you're like, yeah, I can remember. I was at this Husseinia, this Husseinia. What was your salah like at that time? Oh, yeah, it was like this, it was like this, it was like this. What were your friends group like at that time? Oh, yeah, you know what? I, I was. Probably not in the right friends group. Yeah. Everything, it's like a timestamp. It also feels like a milestone, like every single year is a milestone. You always look back at that last year. You're right, as in, you the, you remember milestones. You remember That's it. Uh, memorable things that happen and you remember the people that you were around as you were mentioning, you remembering what kind of person you were at that time as well. And I think every year there is, whether you like it or not, there is a, a, a certain type of remembrance. Like you yeah. do remember what you were like that at, lost, that, point in at time. that point in time, which is... And the question is, am I any closer to Allah? It's great. I can recite, I can read, I can do the studio work, I can do yeah. the tabarruk, whatever. <laughs> if I'm no closer to Allah, what was the point? What's the point of it, yeah. And I, I say this, and I d deliberately, a touch contentiously, right? And I, I say a touch, and it's, it's... There's a lot of truth behind it, I think. What is the value of the red on the chest if we've not progressed towards Allah? Mm. There's value, but this is da'i Allah that we're trying to connect with. The caller unto Allah. Oh. So if the caller unto Allah is like, hey, I'm calling you unto Allah. We're like, labbaik ya Hussein, but I'm not following the call that you're telling me yeah, to go yeah, to. Yeah, then yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a bit directionless. I think that's a, that's, it's a major, major issue actually that, that a lot of the youth aren't really grasping. Is that they're, they're getting involved in the cultural aspects of the tradition of mm -hmm. mourning about the and Hussein. But there's a, ma there's a very, very important lesson to be learned and Imam al-Hussein, if you're still, you know, as a human being in this day and age, if you're still light with your salah, Imam al-Hussein died for salah. If you're still light with family and and um, and friends, Imam al-Hussein died for this course. Yeah. There's a lot that Imam al-Hussein died for yeah. to give us, you know, to give us the that major lesson that we have to we have to actually take the the the, the crux of why he actually went out. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going out for any worldly affairs. I'm going out to resurrect the, the teachings of, of the no, Holy Prophet. Yeah. What, are, what yeah. were the teachings of the Holy Prophet? Salah, Psalm, and Zakat, and being close to your family members and, and, and the rest of it. Values, values, godly yeah. values, Tawheed. There was a line in there, I'm just going to ask you, you can open up that poem you just recited, yes. so if, if it's easy to, to find. Yeah, yeah right here. Um, Allahumma razakna shafa'at al Hussein, And specifically, there's a part about get, getting rid of my ignorance and making yeah. sure I'm humble, etc. Yeah. Something like this. Oh Lord, remove from my heart all my sins and my arrogance. Let the world know Hussein's a king and I am but his mm. servant. Um, so just this line. Yeah. I am uh, Hussein is a king and I am but a servant. Last year we spoke about Ziyarat Ashura, yeah. right? And we're going to do, inshallah, if Allah gives us the risk, we'll spend a couple of nights Ziyarat Ashura. We'll then go on to looking at Imam al Mahdi's message and how that correlates to Imam al Hussein's message. And we'll go through a few different things, right? But just on that, Hussein is the king, I am his servant. Mm. We open Ziyarat Ashura, Assalamu alayka, Ya Aba Abdullah. It's focused on not Hussein, not Mawlai, not Sayyidi, not Imam, not Malik, not king either actually. It's like, so who is it about? Aba Abdullah. It's about the father or the teacher, however you want to see it, of the abds of Allah subhanahu mm. wa ta'ala. All of this sha'a'il is nothing except to follow in the footsteps of the guy who he himself is like, forget Hussein, I'm an Abd of Allah. But you're the Imam, I'm an Abd of Allah. Mm. But you're a saint, you're Abd of Allah. That's all it was for them. Abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
The difference between an abd and an abd, an abd is like, hey, I have no identity except I'm the slave of my owner. I'm an abd of Allah. Yeah. And that's all it points back to every single time. And I'm just thinking, again, timestamp. Have I got any closer in the last year? Yeah. What was the point of it last year, if not? Yeah. I think on this, on this point of actually the, you know, the imams having this, div- they were so devout in their, their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not, not, not being afraid, not just being a worshiper, but actually loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything pointed to that direction. Imam Hussain in, in, um, in the day of Arafah, um, in, in, the zia- in the dua that we actually, we actually mentioned. Beautiful dua. Everything, everything testifies to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My eyes, my ears, my hair, my whole existence is geared and, and positioned to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Honestly. And the fact that we, you know, we have this love for Imam al-Hussein, which is, which is sometimes unbelievable. Yeah. But th- 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 we stop short of actually taking on the lessons of Imam al-Hussein and what he actually stood for. I kind of like, say it in, in a weird way, right? Which is a doctor says to you, okay, you want the cure. Come to me, I'll give you the cure, come. You'll attend that GP appointment, you won't miss it. You'll be there bang on time, whatever, whatever, whatever. Gives you all this advice, take this medication, whatever, 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 in order to get better. You go home, you don't bother. Yeah. But I visited the GP. <laughs> yeah, bro, it's not going to okay. do anything. Yeah, exactly. oh, but I visit him every single time he calls me. Yeah. But you don't I, I, I don't go to work. I make sure, you know, I cancel work and I make sure I go visit the GP. Yeah, but he's told you to, <laughs> to do ABC. Oh, I'm not feeling the spiritual effects. Yeah. You go to Hussein, but you're not following his teachings. It's a very good point, actually. What's the point, it's right? It's a very, very good point. Um, quick, yeah. And it's something very subtle that, that the tafsir talks about where it's saying, look, you're declaring this salam, this state of peace upon the imam, right? It's not just a physical peace. Fine, well, I won't attack his grave. I won't do anything nonsensical like this. But it's a spiritual declaration of peace. So if I'm not going to attack his grave, fine, that's the physical side. But I also can't attack his soul with my ghiba, with my lying, with my backbiting, yet on the plane towards there, but during the setup for the majlis, or after the majlis, or during the majlis, I'm on my phone spreading some gossip. I'm what do you think is the major drawback? Like, what's, what's, the, what's the major thing holding them back from actually taking on those lessons and actually taking the medications, as you mentioned? Well, great analogy. If, if, if we had the answer, then it's, we wouldn't it's, have it's the issue. It's really fascinating. It's like we, we, we know what the answer is, but no one's actually willing to, to really take it on board. The, um, the only hypothesis that I have is this, and someone shared something today in it, it really summarized it well, and of course I've forgotten how they summarized it. But anyway, point is this. Anything in life we know worth having, struggle. Mm. Right? It's never going to come easy. Yeah. It's struggle. Everyone's like, I want to have this spiritual ascension. I want to feel a lot. I want to be in this whatever. But the lifestyle we're in is about getting it quick. Don't work hard for it. But we know it's a struggle. It's meant to be difficult. Allah tests His servants mm. in order to see how much conviction you're going to have. How much you're going to come back to me. Say the Zainab alayhi salam, and I will never ever get over this line, and I'll repeat it a million times, and I hope no one ever gets fed up of it. How is she able to stand there, see what she's seen, and still come out with that line that there's nothing but beauty in front of her? That is a level of, I've gone through struggle, and still I only see beauty, right? But for us, we see one challenge, everything's out the pram. All those visitations, those thousands of pounds or dollars or whatever you've spent, I wouldn't say wasted, but they're not going to good use. Um, but anyway, we don't want to spend too much time about it. I thought, it was, as I said, I want, this session is a bit more reflective. It's, yeah. you know, for us to think about. We said we'll talk a little bit about this service of Hussein, the Shafa of Hussein. Um, when it comes to the opening night, what is it that's, you know, what recitations are you typically thinking, this is what I want to be focusing on? Yeah, so I think um, the, the, the tradition has always been kind of remembering farewell. The farewell of Imam Hussein from, from Medina. Medina. From Medina. Mm. Um, but in Karbala, things have things have changed slightly, um, and it's transferred to the UK, and and therefore in our in our local centres, in this in the sense that the first night or two is dedicated to the opening of Muharram okay. and the Hilal, the the moon of Muharram, and okay. what that actually brings. And so a lot of poetry is geared towards looking at that moon, that same moon witnessed the calamities of Abu Abdullah mm. Hussein in Karbala. Mm. So a lot of the, the poetry that, we, that, we, uh, that, I'm, that I'm reading and I'm seeing from different reciters, especially in the Arabic world, is geared towards um, 
the the opening of Muharram, um, Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam and and his 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 message, mm -hmm. um, but also the khidmah part of it. So the Fine. and one of the poems I actually recited today in in one of the majalis was Bab Al Husseiniya. So I'm, I forgot the Arabic, I, I've got it written down somewhere, I've got the Arabic, but it basically meant, it means at the door of the Husseiniya, do a sajjad uh, shukr. Hmm. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you life to be able to serve Imam al-Husayn hmm. al And then it goes on further in saying, uh, whoever attends that majlis, so after you've done the 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 sajd the, 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 the shukr, whoever attends that majlis, Fatima al Zahra will be looking at them, mm. because we know obviously in the narrations that any majlis that has the mention of the Ahlul Bayt, particular uh, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, Fatima Zahra is present in that majlis. Inshallah. So a lot of the poetry again, as I mentioned, is is is, is geared towards either the hilal of Muharram, uh, the moon of yeah. Muharram, yeah. and the fact that it's a new month, and specifically relating it to that m moon witnessing mm. um, Karbala and what calamities it's befell and also the, the service for Imam the, service, the start yeah. of the ten nights preparation for Min it -Mahdi ila -Lahdi mm. Husseini, right? yeah. from the cradle to the grave, to the grave yeah. Husseini. and is it this, this moon concept in the subcontinent they have Chandrat, the night of the moon okay. which is like classic it's again how they, how they enter the, into the ten days as well yeah, um, which is quite interesting. I guess in terms of anything you else have you, you have prepared in this vein, I don't know if there's anything else, but maybe whilst you whilst you have a quick look, the yeah, sorry, go, no, I was just gonna share something very briefly with the viewers, which is this, and it's it's really on this same uh, notion of how valuable is this Muharram bin, um, how valuable was the last Muharram? We have this concept when it comes to salah that you can look at the gap between your last salah and your next salah and see if I committed a sin then maybe the previous one wasn't quite on the level. And similarly, when we look back to that previous Muharram, to today's Muharram, what's changed? And if nothing's changed, it's time to try and make that genuine promise to ourselves. I'm going to give this a go. Through the intercession of Aba Abdullah, through the Shafa of Aba Abdullah, I'm going to try and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to try and, when I do this service, before I begin, I'm going to take 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and give it a go. It needs to be practical. I'm going to take 10, 20 seconds and renew that intention. Why am I doing it? I recommend, for example, reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas before you begin it. Remember the oneness, the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why we're doing it at the end of the day. It's to get closer to Him and nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the vehicle that is about Abdullah. So just keep that in mind, especially when you are starting any of your service, as we begin these 10 days of lots of effort, lots of mourning, um, and lots of intensity. I know many of us will, for example, stay up till a lot later. We'll try and amend our schedules. And that's a beautiful thing. But remember, fundamentally, khidmat of Hussein is qurbatan ilallahi ta'ala. And with that, inshallah, we'll continue and we'll listen to a brief recitation by Mullah Ali. As we were mentioning in terms of the service of Imam al-Hussein this is a poem written by um, Nuri Sardar quite a while ago. Um, a few years ago, actually, and I wanted to actually during these verses of, of of love revisit some of the classics and see actually how poetry has changed over the years. Um, but there are some, I, I would say, evergreen poetry um, that can be recited now, ten years, twenty years mm. in, in time, inshallah. And it's this particular one which I. Um, uh, particularly liked from Hajj Nuri. Till the day of my death Every step, every breath Every step, every breath Is for you Till the day of my death Every step, every breath Every step, every breath is for you My soul and my body, everything within me My soul and my body, everything within me is for you 
I know from my soul and my heart that from you never will I part. Oh, Master, your beauty has captured my eye. For you, all that is that I cry, flow rivers beside Hussein. I have no one. Your name is always on my tongue, oh Saviour, a medicine to all my wounds. In my darkness, you are my moon forever. To these words, listen, O oh Rose, throughout me, your name it flows. Do you know it's you I chose, and my heart knows deep in sorrow whenever I can't stand you take me by my hand you take me by my hand toward you my path my destiny everything within me my path my destiny Everything within me is for you. You've taken me out of this world. My heart over you as well. Oh, angel, without you. I, I cannot think right I walk without guidance or sight I'm unwell <clears throat> Against your name I commit crimes but I return time after time Cold and pale I beg you now Take me with you Never ever let me leave you No farewell and by God and by the skies I'm with you until I die every day for you I cry beneath my eyes your body lies without you what is life what reason should I strive what reason should I strive except you my life and so truly everything within me is for you is for you since into my dark life you came i was raised and lived by your name and your way 
Weathering smiles or tears I stand every day. My heart attached to your greatness. I can't breathe without your nearness. I'm away, away from life, away from death. Your sweet name absent from my breath. In tears I stay, oh flower of all my years. I, I see you so very near to the cast sword of shame. So I shed tears needing you here. All my tears and my blood. Testify I'm in love Testify I'm in love With Jose And for your tragedy Everything within me And for your tragedy Everything within me Is for you Say these lines, Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. Contemplate on it. This Ziyarat Ashura that is recommended for us, not just once a year on Yom al Ashur, not just once a month, not just once a week. Our grand scholars recommend this. Try and recite it every day. And in these 10 days of Ashur Muharram, try and recite it every day. But contemplate on that first line, Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. This peace, this level of salam, this infinite level of salam that we want to pass on to Aba Abdullah from As-Salam al from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards not Hussein, not Sayyidi, not Mawlai, but towards Aba Abdullah. The reason for giving him this salam is because he is Aba Abdullah. All his value is because of Aba Abdullah is because he is an Abd of Allah, nothing else. Any value that we have through our service to him should therefore only be because it's Qurbatan illallah. I really pray, dear brothers and sisters, that this point is super clear for us on this first night. That it's something that can, inshallah, be a catalyst for our Muharram, add a new dimension to ensure we find something godly in every single item of service that we do. And just remember this. When you say that line, Assalamu alayka, you're saying alayka, you're saying to you, you're directly in a conversation, in a dialogue with your Imam. When you next recite that line, Assalamu alayka, ya Aba Abdullah, think, am I truly ready to be in a dialogue with my Imam? And the etiquette of someone is that when you direct something towards them, they will reply. And therefore we must ask the question, for however many years I've been saying it, 27 for me, why have I still not heard that reply? Is it because he's not replying or is it because my soul is unable to hear it? Inshallah, may this Muharram be blessed. Inshallah, you'll be able to join us every night as we continue with our lamentations and our reflections. But for now, we head to Karbala with our dear brother, Ahmed Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Thank you.